Greetings Torians, Chaos here. Due to some technical difficulties this week, the video is a bit late. The poll on my Discord server determined that this week's time-lapse build would be from the Legend of Zelda franchise. I decided to take on my own interpretation of the Temple of Time from the Ocarina of Time, a game I was very fond of in my youth. If you'd like to help decide what time-lapse build I'll be doing next week, be sure to participate in my Discord server. A link can be found in the description below. At the end of this video, you will see a Master Sword sprite, which I simply created the sprite and put into a texture pack for the Enchanted Sword Shrine, so in reality, that's what it is. The re-sprite will be available with the world download, so if you'd like to use it in your texture pack, feel free to. The outer walls of the temple are done with the typical stone brick design that I like to do. If you're new to the channel and you're not sure how this is done, I'll leave a link in the description to a video that shows you how you can do this yourself. For the roof, I'm going with some Dynasty Shingle, both red and blue. The blue ones will be painted brown and the red ones will be painted gray just for some accent marks so it's just not one big round triangle on top of the roof. The angle of the triangle starts off a little bit of a 90 degree angle and then it gets steeper towards the top because the original Temple of Time had peaks that kind of shot up in that angle. The bottom floor of the main chamber in the original was a black and white checkered pattern and that's not something I could pull off really well in Terraria since we're a 2D side perspective. However, I thought I would attempt it. So using some uh, white painted sandstone slab with some gray painted dynasty wood, I tried to give it the black and white checkered pattern. I realized that the main tower was going to be a little too short, so using the cheat sheet mod, I copied a segment of it and moved it up several blocks higher before moving on to continuing the rest of the roof. To make sure that everything was nice and even, I used the cheat sheet mod just to adjust the length of the building just a little bit more. The rear chamber that's going to be housing the Master Sword, I wanted it to be kind of dome shaped. Really in the original game you don't get a good look at what the back end of the church is other than the back end where the sword is, is a massive room. I figured it'd be nice to have a, another tower towards the rear of the temple and just to make the roof look a little bit different than the other two styles. These support struts that I have in the two main tower rooms, made out of stone slab, are completely optional. It's just something to round off the square blocky room, and it's something that I like to do in a lot of the square rooms that I make, just to give it a nice different shape to it without necessarily getting rid of the square box. The false foundation floor is going to be made out of a blue tiled wall painted white with some gray painted rich mahogany fence every seven tiles just to let some light in there. And this way we can get the grass and all the plants in front of the building and still have them be visible. For now I'm going with white painted crimptain block for the main door that will lead into the rear chamber. I do end up changing that later in the build however.
I decided to go with some gray painted blue tile wall for the background just because it's a smaller brick size and I thought it might look a little bit better to make it look like it's off in the distance. I do experiment around with making it white here before I realize that I don't really want this to be white because it blends a little too closely with the floor and the side walls and it makes it a little bit harder to tell what's the foreground, what's the background. Plus, I'm going to be building some pillars and windows and a bunch of intricate designs in the central chamber which will kind of look a lot better if I have a darker wall behind them. Using some palladium column, I create the pillars on top of which I have some uh, stone slab and sandstone slab, all of which are painted white because I'll be actuating into the background. To get the art curve, I use some honey platform followed by some marble platform followed by some brass shelf, all of which again are painted white because they'll be actuated. But those give a nice general slow curve and that's what you're seeing in between each of the columns. Once the row of columns is done, I push them into the background and then I grab some ebon wood painted white and make a little bit more columns right above. For the window frame, I'm using white painted sandstone slab, which again will be actuated. And then the windows themselves are going to be white painted gem spark blocks. I'll be alternating the topaz and the diamond gem spark. The light from the diamond gem spark kind of overrides the light from the topaz one, so everything's going to appear white in terms of light but since I'm alternating the topaz and the diamond we get these clear lines in between each of the panes of the windows. At the top of the window I decided to grab some deep yellow paint and paint that Triforce yellow just to make it stand out a little bit more. And then I build another segment of windows in the pane below. And once that's done, I go back above and make the panes of the window a lot smaller so we have bigger panes on the lower segment and smaller panes up above. Just to save a bit of time, I use Cheat Sheet to copy and paste the design for the rest of the chamber. I'm knocking out the windows in this part here because I want to copy what was in the original design of the Temple of Time where you drop in the three stones before opening up the door. So I'm going to create a small altar right here using some deep red painted sand. I place the carpet that's placed right in front of the altar, a little bit of a stairwell, and then I have some uh, gray painted actuated granite block for the top of the altar with some white painted palladium column beneath it. I experiment around with some gold ore and some chlorophorite to kind of make one of the stones, but it didn't turn out quite right. In the end, I just used the chlorophorite, actuated and hammered to a half block right on top of the altar. In the original game, you couldn't really go up any of these towers, you just saw them from the outside and once you were inside the temple, you couldn't see them whatsoever. But I decided since I'm going to be building the entire structure anyway, let's go ahead and throw a purpose to it. So I do just make this kind of a tower with some iron bar windows and I'm using some ebonstone brick wall painted grey to accent those windows with some borders and accent the walls as well using some brown painted shade wood wall and some brown painted platforms I make a ladder going up the center. The 
the altar where the master sword is going to be placed is made out of some sandstone slab painted white with some ebonstone brick painted white on top of it flanked by some platforms. I also placed some diamond gem spark block beneath it and hammered one segment of the wall right where the sword is going to be out. That way we have some sunlight and more light going down in there because in the original game there was a light being cast on the sword itself, and so I copied a segment of one of the windows, reduced it in size, and reshaped it just to make it look like that is where the light is coming from. Now I'm placing a few final details around the build, and I do change the door to be copper plating just because I think it looks better, and I wrap everything up. And that is the Temple of Time done. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps me out and I really, really do appreciate all of the feedback that I get. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.